Okay, so here is the board of the ferret inverter we did and uh, I told in the part one that the MOSFETs were blown, however MOSFETs were not blown. I just connected the resistor wire which I forgot in the part one and I connected back uh, this over here to the ground uh, and now it is working. Let me show you. Currently I am having a 12 volt power supply which is a switch mode power supply with 12 volt and 2.2 uh, amps and firstly I will check the voltage of the power supply and then I will connect it to this inverter and we'll check the output of this inverter okay so it is verified that there were 12 volts a DC so the power supply is working and one wire is already connected I'm connecting the second wire which is the ground wire of this inverter and I see the LED lights up and this means the inverter is working right now now it is very dangerous to touch these two wires which are supplying AC voltage I will verify it with the, my meter later uh, that how much voltage it is delivering because I was having less turn on the output so the output voltage would not be 220 volt AC exactly it should be less than two, uh, 220 volts let's find some bulb okay this means that this wire is live and this wire this wire is neutral okay so if I touch this wire with my hands nothing will happen but I would never ever try to touch both of these wires because this would be the baddest day ever if I do so okay so here I connect it with the 15 watt tungsten filament bulb there it goes oh that works that works I would not touch it with my thumb so that is why I am telling again and again to keep the safety in your mind this is a stupidity that I am doing with my hands so oh sh damn this bulb is fused let's find another bulb okay here I am with another bulb yes that also worked okay now okay so let's test the voltage of the AC that is the output of uh, this inverter let's take a look okay let me show you 181 volts AC this is because I was having less number of turns because I was having a short wire I didn't have the exact length so I could make all of the turns but I'm giving data all of the data in the schematic right now so let's take a look of the schematic okay so here we are taking a look of the circuit diagram as we see that uh, this uses the SG3525 IC and if you take a look on the pinouts uh, then we have about 16 pins of this IC however these two pins are used to define the uh, frequency generating level at the output B and output A. So pin number 11 and 14 are the output pins. However, pin number 10 is the shutdown pin. We can add functions to this schematic about automatic shutdown. We see we have used pin number 10 with the 10 kilohm resistor just to keep it turned on. And and we see pin number 14 and pin number 11 are the output pins these outputs with 4.7 R resistor which are the gate resistor and these are being feeding to the 3205 MOSFETs the IR3205 is a general purpose MOSFET and 
you can use any kind of MOSFET with that and I used a 75 NF75 MOSFET and I only used two of them I only used two because these two makes the bridges however this one is the parallel of this one these both MOSFETs are parallel to each other while these are also parallel to each other these MOSFETs are in parallel to increase the power just like the other inverters okay so simple the standard tapping of the transformer is connected to the 12 volt battery and there is a smoothing capacitor of 4700 microfarad and about the turns <coughs> The first end is taken and then made four turns and tethered tapping is taken. Then I made additional four turns and another end is taken out. The core that I use is ferret core and it has a model of EC42. I will talk about the coil, the winding coil. Uh, that I use to win this transformer later in this video okay uh, I didn't need these extra turns so uh, I had also very less wires so I made the single winding over here and I gave only 73 turns however I was about to give uh, 98 turns in order to get 220 volts uh, this is the reason uh, that I I'm having only 181 volts at the output as I have shown recently to you okay so now I will talk about the winding specification and um, if you have any question about this schematic or circuit diagram you can ask me here in the comments down below let's talk about the board we have seen recently and uh, let's measure the wire the thickness of the wire let's see okay here I'm having this board and what I am going to do is to connect it with this battery this is 12 volt battery and here is the cycle in standby usage charging voltage was written so I connect the positive bar to the positive end the battery is definitely not in the good condition but however it works there it goes the LED light tells that inverter is working now the two wires of the inverter are dangerous as I have already told you at the start of the video and you see this bulb is 200 watts uh, and tungsten filament so at high frequency it will be better to use it uh, definitely at the highest frequency about 60 kilohertz that is coming out of this inverter the inductive load is not suitable and we see that the bulb lights up and this is the sufficient light that we can get out of the uh, the 200 watts so at 181 volts oh my gosh this one is too hot so the MOSFETs are only two, uh, so 200 watts were, was the great load on this. However, uh, the transformer, the ferret core, is enough to supply about 350 to 400 watts, I think. Uh, okay, this is the wire that I used as the output. What we can say, the secondary coil. This is the thin one and I took it out from my transformer, the iron core, the iron core bulky transformer. And let's test it also on this thing because this is, let's clean it first, oh, however this one is not the best way to clean it up let's take a look of it three clicks on the ratchet and let's see the value it 
camera can focus approximately nearer to what the Warner Caliber was telling. Uh, I also don't have the zero error in the micrometer. Okay. The other wire was taken out from the ATX power supply. You can see the difference between these two wires. This is hard enough and I gave four and four turns and took center tapping from this one. As you can see, this is always available in any kind of ATX computer power supply. So you can take it out. However, this is also available, but uh, this was not quite useful. Maybe I use it in the next project for something. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. And I would love if you subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you so much. See you next time.